harmonize with me and hold me tight all through the night. You're shining bright, I'm your oyster, baby, you're my pearl. William! Dominic Monaghan. We have returned to the Friendship Onion stage. Anything to report? Are you comfortable there? Financially. No, just uh, just uh, your, like your bum and your legs. Yeah, these are comfy chairs. It's nice on your back. I enjoy this pose. I don't know, would this be a yogic pose? Where, like a flamingo almost. You I know? wonder if that's good or bad for your hips. Don't know, but I like it. It makes me feel quite comfy. You like that pose, which I call the uh, Michael Corleone pose, because at the end of The Godfather, he just sits in his chair like, who's going to mess with me now? And who well, is no you, one. Frodo? Frodo? Yeah, I think it's Frodo. Are you sure Frodo? Yeah, it's I'm going to kick my shoes off, though. Yeah, kick them off. Come Have on. a great time. Peeling the onion. Hey, should we fire right into a bunch of questions? Because we've got a fantastic guest. Yeah. And we're not going to have a bunch of time. But I'm going to jump right into a question here. Housekeeping. How, How much fun are you to keep the house so clean and true? Carry on, Dom. Hey, a message here from the lovely Deanna in the northern Chicago suburbs. Mm. Very specific. Probably likes my lot. Mm-hmm, a lot indeed. Who said, I read an article the other day about all the times people ugly cry when watching TV shows. And Dom's not Penny's boat moment was on the list. Oh. I, should, I should think so too. It got me thinking about all the times I've ugly cried while watching Lord of the Rings, which was essentially the entire ending of Return of the King, which goes on for a long time. Are there any times you can remember ugly crying while watching a TV show or movie? And if so, can you tell us about your experience? I'll tell you right now. Billy Boyd has not cried since he was probably eight years old, something like that. He's a man of a stone, emotional heart of stone. What? I was crying. I was, in the, I was in the cinema myself, wasn't I? In the theatre watching uh, Maverick. Top Gun. Oh, you were in tears. Weren't I you? was weeping, Dom. Or well, was it? Was there some? Was a woman? Was it Goose? Goose. There was. There was a couple of talk bits. To me, talk to me, Goose. Talk to oh me. my, Dom. <laughs> and I was enjoying the crying. Talk to me, Goose. Yeah, of course, I enjoy a good crying. Because it was a dark room and there was hardly anyone in there, and it was quite cathartic, to be honest. Mm-hmm. I just, I just let it go. Always let it go, yeah. And your bowels as well. No. Oh. Okay. Just, just the crying. Sometimes I think. Sometimes I think. Ah, I think I, I need a cry. So Do then, I, yeah. So then I have to put on a movie because it's hard for me to cry in real life, but I can really get myself there with films. E.T. <gasps> Ponet. Have you seen Ponet? No. <gasps> it's a French film about a little girl. She's probably five, and unfortunately, both her parents are brown bread. And it's uh, you see a it's little girl already, try, isn't it? try to deal with that. It's an amazing performance by this little French girl. Beautiful. Lovely. Any any other sad films at the top of your list? Steel Magnolias. Yeah, I'd steal Magnolias with you. With you? No, the movie. Oh, never seen it. Oh, sad. Is it sad? Yeah. On Golden Pond, I always heard oh! it was very sad. Not seen that. Uh, well, there's a few actually, oh, isn't there? You and I went to see Up, and you I was, cried, I was crying so hard that you said to me, "Are you okay?" I thought you were t- ready. Shut, shut. Like that. I, I know it was shut. awful. Yeah. And you leant over and went, will you shut up? You're ruining the film for my wife and I. Well, I was trying to eat my M&M's. Well, I think we've covered that. William. What? We've got a, a, another message from Callan and Jackie. Do you want to read that one? Yeah, wait till you hear this, Tom. Okay, my wait. wife and I watch uh, The Friendship Onion every week, always with a cup of tea. We're curious to know how you take your tea. For instance, one, what is your steeping method? Loose leaf or in the bag? Mm-hmm. Two, what's your favourite flavours? Three, What's your preferred time of day for tea? Or is it with particular meals? Mm-hmm. Well, that's good. Good question. The tea question, Tom. Well, on you go. Have a th- uh, let us know. Well, I've got a lot. I've got a lot we, to say about... We take about... tea in a few different ways, don't I've we? I've got a lot to say about tea. Tea for me is almost always what we call builder's tea for me. Yeah. Which is like your Thai, uh, PG tips or your uh, Thai Fu. Thai Fu, yeah. Yeah, T- just, just like your black tea... And I have that. It's got to be boiling water. I hate. I would never take a cup of tea on a flight because it's never boiling water. It's warm. It's hot. So it's got a head on it. It's got a little (laughs) kind of no scum. Scum. So it has to be boiling right off the boil. Oh dear. Into the bag. Yeah. Leave that. Let that steep for a, a couple of minutes. And then get the bag out, stick the milk in. Get a little stir before you take the bag out. Little stir. A little stir, or give it a squeeze. Oh, squeezy. And then that's my tea ready. And I'm 
I would say 98% of my time, that's the tea I drink. And I, uh, my wife used to laugh because she said when she first met me, she couldn't believe how much tea I drank. Mm. I probably drank 10 of those a day. Wow. But now I'll maybe have one a day, right. maybe two. In the morning, is it? No, coffee in the morning. Lovely. Later on. Lovely. I'll tell you what I love it with, Tom. Wait till you hear this. <gasps> sandwich. Ooh. White bread. Ooh. Banana. A banana sandwich? Just that? And a cup of tea. <sighs> Are you, it, is it just simply bananas? Are you, are you, is the butter on that bread? There's no butter. It's wow. simply banana. banana. And it can't be too black banana oh, and no. it can't be too green. Yeah. It has to be perfect. Yeah. And then with a nice cup of tea, and I'll put on the TV, well, so a nice enjoy show. Yourself. Put your feet up and take your shoes off. There's nothing better, Tom. Is that right? That's as good as, as a 10 minutes can be. Yeah. No, I'm with you on that one. For the past, I would say, probably year or so, in the morning, I've been drinking matcha, which oh, is which yeah. is green tea powder. Yeah, yeah. Super yummy. And the, the whole method of that can't can't be boiling. No. You no, know, if you if you put boiling water on matcha, it makes it very bitter. What what temperature would you say? Well, you very kindly, when you stayed at my house one time when I wasn't there, bought me the greatest kettle yeah. ever, yeah. which has I think six different uh, water settings, mm -hmm. so all the way up to black tea, yep. boiling, yep. and all the way down to green tea, which I think is closer to like 77, 78 degrees Celsius, so nowhere near boiling. No, nowhere near it. So a little bit closer to a new long. Yeah, like a new long, exactly. It's a delicate flavor. So a little bit of the powder, stir it up with some cold water to get the powder, you know, in, into more of a, a liquid, and then you put the warm water on there, and I sit there, a little meditation in the morning. But if I'm having your type of tea, your yeah. builder's tea, yeah. I'm probably about the same as you. Boiling hot water, leave it in there for a minute, a minute and a half without touching it at all. Nice little vigorous stir. Take it out. Milk. Done. And I like that with a fry up. A fry up? No, that's nice. Fried well. eggs, fried, fried bread, beans, mushrooms, tomato. And a nice cafe somewhere. It's great with a fry up. Oh, yeah. Because I think sometimes the, the, some, sometimes the stuff in a fry up can be a little tough on the stomach and if you've got a milky kind of tea in there yeah, all good know. have we answered everything i think we have haven't we? that was quite good that dom tea it put in the me right in the mood yeah do you know what i could go a fish tea oh a lovely fish, fish so chips tea. white bread with butter a nice cup of tea have you found a, a chippy uh near where you live i found one actually the other day there um there's a, a new zealand chippies just open near us wow not too near but near enough that i could jump in the car and go and get some Fish and chips. Treat yourself. Because you like a chippy, don't you? How would you say that in a New Zealand accent? Fish and chips. Very good. Mm, thanks. That was good, that, Dom. Hey, should we do a few voicemails, Johnny, over there? Johnny on the spot. Well, while we're waiting for the uh, voice voicemails, do you want to have a go at a tongue twister? Why not? How are you feeling? I feel great. Tongue very um, dexterous this morning. Mara from Florida. Tampa, Florida has sent us one. Mm -hmm. Well, how does that go, Dom? Well, am I doing it first? What would you think? Yeah, I'll go first. Do you first. want to get through it one slowly so that we know what it is? Yeah, there's one on the second page as well. There's one line on the second page. Here we go. Okay, Isa. Mrs. Puggy Wuggy has a square cut punt. Not a punt cut square, just a square cut punt. It's round in the stern and blunt in the front. Mrs. Puggy Wuggy has a square cut punt. I did it. You try it. Mrs. Puggy Wuggy has a square cut punt. Not a punt cut square. Just a square cut punt. It's round in the stern and blunt in the front. Mrs. Puggy Wuggy has a square cut punt. Perfect. We've nailed it. Hey, we got a voicemail. You don't want to go it. faster? I think you guys could probably do this a lot faster. I'm going to go a little bit faster. Ready? <clears throat> Mrs. Puggy Wuggy has a square cut punt. Not a punt cut square, just a square cut punt. It's round in the stern and it's blunt in the front. Mrs. Puggy Puggy. Ah! <laughs> I'm going to go that fast. Go. Mrs. Puggy Wuggy has a square cut punt. Not a punt cut square, but a square cut punt. It's round in the stair and it's blunt in the front. Mrs. Puggy Wuggy has a square cut punt. Ah! Nailed it. Oh. I know a guy who was in a play. I don't know if I've told you this story. I know this story, but it's a good one. Uh, he's, he's in a play and he's uh, an older actor's in it. And his, his first entrance, he comes on and the young actor says to him, where have you been all day? And he says, I, I've been hunting... I've been out in Kenny's punt. Yes. And he, they did this all through rehearsals. The day before they opened, the young actor says, I wouldn't want to have your first line. 
He says, what do you mean? He says, well, you know, if you get that mixed up, out in Kenny's punt, I've spent all day out in Kenny's punt. Yeah. What do you mean? If you switch that round, that would be Penny's, you know. Mm. And the, the old dad says, I never ever, I never thought. <laughs> and he says, and he got to open the night and he's thinking about it. And he comes on and the young actor says, so where have you been all day? And he says, what? I've been out all day and, and Kenny's punt. No, no, Penny's. Taters. Oh, God. <laughs> 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 no, never worked again. <laughs> After years of fine print contracts and getting ripped off by wireless providers, if we've learned anything, is that there's always a catch. So when I first heard that Mint Mobile offers premium wireless starting at just 15 bucks a month, Woo! I thought, what's the catch? But after talking to them, using the service, it all made sense. There isn't one, no. Mint Mobile's secret sauce is that they are the first company to sell wireless service online only. They cut out the cost of retail stores and they pass those sweet savings directly to you. Ooh, fantastic. For anyone who hates their phone bill, Mint Mobile offers premium wireless for just 15 bucks a month. Well, Billy said, yeah. Mint Mobile gives you the best rate, whether you're buying one for you or for your family. And at Mint, families start at two lines. All plans come with unlimited talk and text and high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. Use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and keep your same phone number along with your existing contacts. Switch to Mint Mobile and get premium wireless service starting at just 15 bucks a month. To get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and get the plan shipped to your door for free, go to mintmobile.com slash onion. That's mintmobile.com slash onion. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash onion. Oh, Johnny, give us a voicemail. Oh, come three. on, Johnny, please. Coming up. Don't sit. Here we go. Bones. Hi, Billy and Dom. My name is Emily, and I live in Winter Park, Florida. My boyfriend showed me the Lord of the Rings trilogy for the first time recently, and while I'm usually not a fan of super long movies, they are excellent films. I especially love The Hobbits, but Pippin is my favorite. My question for you is, if you could try any food item from the Lord of the Rings, what would it be? For me, it would have to be Bilbo's giant birthday cake and the magic limbus spread that fills up your tummy after just one bite. Piggybacking off of that, what is each of your guys' favorite meal of the day? Dessert counts too. Lots of love and thanks in advance. Bye bye. Lovely, Emily. Lovely there. note. Lovely voice. Lovely. Well, and a lovely choice of Hobbit, if you don't mind me saying. Well, I wasn't really in full agreement with that one. But so, foods to eat. I mean, I think just to have the magical feeling of what the lambast bread does in terms of filling you up. A it's bite. Exactly, yeah. And then it feels like you've had a meal. Just to have that experience would be interesting. Yeah. And then outside of that, I get the feeling that when we rested which in the book in rivendell is a long time yeah months and months if not years yeah. in rivendell i bet the elves cook up some lovely uh delicate decadent food you know i think yeah i, I totally agree lembas bread you need to try it to see what that is yeah. amazing and i i think that's right that you would go for the elvish spent all day making mm. something beautiful mm. i would like to have the meal when we are dancing on the table, when um, Legolas and Gimli have the drinking competition, what yeah. bar's that in? I can't remember now. No, it's the third movie or second movie. I don't know the name of that bar. But yeah. that place looks like, I bet they'd have a great stew <coughs> and a great beer. Yeah. I would like to have that meal. Yeah, that's a good shout. Nice. Lovely. Thanks, That was Emily. a good one. Yeah. Any more, John? Hi, Billy and Dom. I volunteered with you guys uh, on Sunday at Fan Expo Toronto. It was an amazing experience. My name is Perry. I hope you guys remember me. Uh, I got a picture with you, Billy. My question to you is, uh, I remember you speaking with someone uh, at Fan Expo about getting your tattoo uh, redone. So what's the story with that? Uh, why did you get a tattoo uh, finished? Right, Perry. Well, it was good to see everyone in Toronto. That was a... Great convention. All those conventions were so much fun this yeah. year, eh? Yeah. That was a real real highlight of this year yeah and dom's got a lot more tattoos than me i've only got the fellowship tattoo the one that uh, for people that don't know the nine nine guys in the fellowship except for john reese davis who sent his stuntman all got right. the number nine in elvish tattooed different places in our bodies but the same tattoo is the number nine in high elvish 
And obviously, it's been 20 years mm. since we've had that tattoo. Mm. And Dom was getting some of his tattoos touched up. And he said, this is a great tattoo artist. You should get your fellowship. Uh, Mark, Mark Draven. Lovely Mark, Mark Draven. Draven. We should say hello to Mark. Thanks Hiya, for, Mark. Thank thanks you very much. Emma. And Mark's, uh, Mark said he would, he would be, you know, delighted to tattoo any of the four hobbits. In fact, it was Sean Astin who did it first. Sean Astin got his wife's birthday. I think her name. Name for their anniversary. Can I have yeah. a look at your tattoo since it's healed? Yeah, you ready? Let's have a look. Because it, it, it wasn't that faded. Elijah's is really faded. Oh, it looks brand new, Bill. Is that better? Looks brand new. We're really? not allowed to show it, or we would. Yeah, it I looks think great. everybody has shown it. Yeah, I think they've shown it by now. But I like the little kind of shadowing that you've got on it now. <laughs> 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 Can we do that a lot? I like <laughs> yeah, that. <laughs> it looks great. It looks great. Yeah. yeah, it's much better. I feel much fresher now. Thanks again, Mark Draven. Thanks, if you guys, Mark. if you guys want a tattoo done, check out Mark Draven. He's always at the conventions, and he managed to work on myself, Sean Astin, and Billy. And I think he was gonna work with Elijah, but he ran out of time, didn't he? I wish he, Elijah would just get all our faces tattooed on him. Yeah, I th- I, Elijah's quite impressionable. I bet we could convince him across his belly. Yeah, be brilliant. brilliant. Yeah. John, is there another voicemail? <laughs> Hi, Billy and Dom. It's Daphne Sargent, and I want to know why. What's your favorite color and why? Oh, oh Daphne. Daphne, favorite what, color. What an adorable voice. Right? Hey, let's guess how old we think Daphne is. 43, 44. 75. Mm. I bet in real life, I bet Daphne's seven. Ten. Nice. Favourite colour and why? Mm. Mine would be blue, I think. What t- What hue of blue? Um, what's... See, like, the blue at the back of that hand, oh, almost. Like a... Is it, would it would it be a blue oh like a like a sky blue? <laughs> is that only because that is the sky? Yeah, but I mean, darker than that. Well, that's green, surely. <laughs> but I don't know why. I don't know why it's my favourite colour. But I'm always drawn to it. I keep buying the same thing. You know what I mean? I'll go and buy a shirt, and then I'll you know a year later go out and I'll look and I'll think, oh, that's a nice looking shirt, and I basically bought the same shirt again. I wonder if it complements your. Your colouring, your, your your skin tone, and, I don't your, and, think and so. your eyes. You know? Because I also, I, I bought a blue sofa. You did buy a blue sofa, yeah? I've slept on that sofa. I like blue. With your little dog. I like blue too. I think blue's my favourite colour. Mine would be an electric blue. Oh, blue, electric blue, blue. what's the colour of your room? Like a, like a kind of iridescent, maybe almost fluorescent electric blue something that's going like oh i like that blue and in my as my years have gone on in my in the last few years i'm more and more drawn to yellow Uh, yeah i love a yellow yellow quite calming reminds me of the morning you know like a quiet morning lovely quiet morning and blue and yellow goes very well together is that right in a in a clothing vibe and uh, anything right okay i'll keep that in mind well lovely thanks daphne thanks daphne we've got one more billy Let's see. Let's have a look here. Hi, Billy and Dom. This is Kim from Leipzig in Germany, and I have two questions for you. Uh, first one: What do you think makes a good director from an actor's perspective? So, how does a director have to approach working with actors so that you enjoy working with them? Ah. And the second one is for Billy. So, I've read somewhere that you were actually originally supposed to use a West Country English accent on Lord of the Rings to match the other hobbits. I'm quite glad this didn't happen, but I'm also curious, how would English Pippin have sounded? Can you give us a glimpse? <laughs> so thank you so much, guys, for making this podcast. It is always so much fun to listen to. You have fun. Bye. Thank you from Germany, Tom. Le- where you were born. Leipzig. Yeah. Leipzig. Uh, where I was born, born in Berlin, yeah. Um, well, let's start with the first question. What makes a good director? Right. For me, um, I, is it suitcases of cash? Suitcases of cash. I like when, you know, a, a director said uh, once, not to me, but I, I heard them, and he was talking to, I think, a younger actor or whatever, and he says, what a director wants from an actor is them to bring something. They'd, even if it's wrong, what they hate is when you turn up and say, what is it you'd like me mm. to do? They want 
something. Mm. And I think a good director, once they've seen what you've brought, <laughs> then they're open to, oh, that I like what you did there, but could you tone down this part? Yeah. Maybe it'd be great if you sat down when you said that. And so they, they get inspired by what the actors are doing and then mold it from there, you know? Mm. Would it be fair to say in terms of what you just said there, that it's kind of a collaborative thing. That's exactly what it is, That would yeah. have been my answer is like, you don't want an overwhelming director who's just like, it's this and only this. Yeah. But you also don't want a director to be like, well, do whatever you want and we'll figure yeah. it out. You want to have a conversation ongoing. And then it's fun and you're playing yeah. and that's the whole thing, isn't yeah. it? And then you're making it up. Yeah. And then and, you're, uh, yeah. On the second part, yeah, it's, uh, well, it was kind of true that we messed around with a lot of stuff um, as we were trying to work out who the hobbits were. And there was the idea that it would be more like Mary. Mm. Um, Frodo is more RP, so he's more kind of posher kind of thing. But uh, it was as simple as I think Pete thought I wasn't as funny. It, and I lost a lot of the comedy when I was doing the... Mm. A little West bit in your head, thing. maybe, with the West yeah. Country thing. Yeah. So I wasn't as probably loose with like trying to make things funny, and I suppose they they needed uh, Pippin for well, Pippin and Mary to to do the, the kind of comedy of the or most of the comedy in the movie. So it was as simple <laughs> as that. But then also, as our dialect coaches, Roisin and Andrew explored the worlds and the appendices and stuff like that. Things started to come up that lent to a Scottish tonality like took borough you know yeah. the kind of idea and took's a scottish word inventing golf and all this kind of stuff they live the in clans. their own country and right. in, the, in the shire they have their own place that in the north of the shire so there was a lot that it made sense but you're right that originally i think the thought with most of kind of whenever anybody thinks of hobbits they think of that west country mm. sort of but also we wanted each hobbit to feel like their own character we didn't want people just to say oh the hobbits mm. so we're always trying how can i be slightly different from the other one so that really helped in as well mm. and uh i can't really remember the west country accent how's it going Tom? <clears throat> hello frodo hello frodo like, uh, like speaking like a farmer from dorset or something oh, from dorset yeah right? yeah but yeah so it would have been it would have been different but um um, as a as a, a Scot as well, I'm always happy when I, I hear a Scottish voice somewhere. Because I don't hear enough of them. What's that thing that they talk about nowadays? If you if you don't see it, you can't be it. Mm -hmm. So this mm -hmm. idea of inclusion in, in projects and stuff. And obviously there must have been a lot of young or, or even older Scottish people out there going, oh, that's a voice that I know, that's a person that I can yeah, recognise yeah, and stuff. Yeah. It's important, the inclusion thing. Yeah. But lovely, lovely question I'd from like Leipzig. I'd to go back to Germany. I love Germany. Yeah, you've spent quite a lot of time in Germany, haven't you? Because you you were singing with a with an orchestra. Yeah, yeah, amazing. Was I there mean, a particular city that you ended up liking the most? I probably, and all my times going to Germany, I I love Munich. Mm. I think you know that uh, that sort of what do you call that part? It's uh, it's got a name, doesn't it? That part of Germany. Is Bav that Bavarian? Uh, yeah, it's Bavarian, Bavarian isn't yeah. it? I think I would think I, so. I love that sort of whoa, yeah, which, yeah, big beers and we should go for Oktoberfest and get absolutely slaughtered. I would love it, Dom. I love it around. They, I mean, you and I grew up drinking pints, didn't we? But in Oktoberfest, they'll serve you a glass of beer that's like four or five pints. And do you know why that was? Go on. I found out at Oktoberfest. I was at a place, and you know they do that real sort of designed. Amazing German job. mug yeah. with a, a lid on it and yeah, all that. Yeah. Uh, it was because to keep the beer cold, it was kept down in like a cave in a cellar. So when you to go down and get the beer was such a hassle. So if you were getting a pint, they would do you half an hour. So you got like five pints or whatever that is. Brilliant. So you could sit for ages and mm. have a lid on it. And Yeah, that whole city just explodes with life during October. Yeah. For me live music and costumes. And, you know, I think it's been tricky at times to maybe be proud to be German mm. because of, you know, what's gone on in their history. But Oktoberfest is a time where German people are like, this is a great country and um, it's a fantastic festival. It's, a, a, it's, a great, it's one of my favourite countries. It's yeah. a country when I first started going, 
that I thought, well, yeah, I'd like to go to Germany. But it's now became a place that I think I could live there. It's oh, a yeah. place that I could, you know, I like their style of living. Mm. All the different cities, from Berlin and the oh, East Berlin's and the amazing. West. It's just, uh, yeah, it's a great place. Yeah, the music coming out of Berlin and the mm. street art and the food. Yeah, it's, it's a brilliant city, Berlin. Yeah. Lovely. Great stuff. Thank you very much for that. And remember, if you want to send in uh, a voicemail to ask a question or anything, anything. it's uh, speakpipe.com forward slash The Friendship Onion. Yes, and also if you'd like to send your fan art, we, fan might, art. Still have fan art. we might still have time for you to send fan art and at some point in the not too distant future we'll open it up and it'll be an incredible thing can't wait it's going to be a lot of fun Billy what is it Dom Rob's here where he's right there he's to on your my left. left yeah I've been here man lovely Rob I've been, been here the whole time yeah <laughs> yeah How's did it going? you hear us doing all that stuff there? yeah yeah I heard you Sorry guys the whole that. time that's very, brilliant very self indulgent crime doesn't stuff. pay yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, we need to change our behavior. <laughs> well, it's great to meet you. I've never met you. I know, right? Yeah, he it's has. great to meet you. Yeah, um, he has. We have an interesting story about getting to know each other because we, I got to know you through your wife. That's right. Who, I'll make this story very short, but I was in Australia working uh, on an X Men film with Hugh Jackman and the lovely no cast. Big deal. Uh, yeah, the yeah the lovely um, dialect coach on that said to me. Hey, if if you want to like practice your American accent, you know, let me know. So I spent like a few sessions with him and he was excellent. Yeah. And then when I came out to LA, I was doing a film called The Day. And I reached out to him and said, I really need a dialect coach as good as you. And he said, You have to go work with Sandy Cordry, who's the best. So great. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He's been he's he he was her, her agent almost wow. for the longest time. Wow. You know, he would just, uh, if he he's often busy with Hugh Jackman, you yeah. know, and yeah. so he would give Sandy uh, customers and, and it was great. She she doesn't do it that much anymore. I'm sure she'd do it for you if oh, you well. uh, yeah. had to bang out a uh, yeah, an uh, accent. E e Midwestern. Right. So we did, I think, probably, I don't know, four or six yeah. sessions or something like that. And then at one point while we were just chit-chatting, she mentioned... Well, you know, Rob and, and Children's Hospital. And I was like, oh, Children's Hospital. I love that show. Who's Rob? Oh, she that's went, right. And she went, Rob, my husband. And I went, oh, your husband's in Children's Hospital. And she went, Rob is the clown, <laughs> the creator of Children's Hospital. I was like, oh, my God, kind of starstruck. And then within a month or so, I want to say, you you'd, were on Children's you'd written Hospital, the right? British version. Yeah, yeah. I think it, that might have even been that episode largely inspired by get, getting to know you. A Brit. Like, right. I got a Brit. Right. All we need is like six more Brits. Yeah. <laughs> One and down. What, what, what happens in the episode? It becomes um, English all of a sudden. Yeah. A little boy yeah, well, gets no, trapped in a like box. The, 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 you know how it was at a time when all a lot of them successful American television were ad adaptations of British shows in, in the vein of like The Office. Right. Right. Yeah. So, uh, and th there was a couple of them running. So we decided to do it the opposite way. Like we were an American show that the Brits decided to do their version of. It's brilliant. And brilliant. it was called The Hospital for Children, I think, yeah, yeah. Uh, or something like that. Yeah. And it was it was excellent. It was one. It's still one of my favorite episodes. It's a great. The lovely Frances Farmer was in there. Yes. And again, yeah, I was yeah. a little bit starstruck. She's because amazing. She was in Titanic, so I talked to her off about Titanic. But what a show. I mean, I was watching Children's Hospital the other night, knowing you were coming in. I love the fact that right from the start you were doing previously on Children's Hospital and there wasn't a previously <laughs> on Children's Hospital. Yeah, yeah. The, the anarchy in that show I is I don't brilliant. know why we started doing that. It's so funny because, oh, you know why? It's just a, because Children's Hospital, basically, there there are there is a story to it and sometimes we challenge ourselves and do like five, have five stories rolling at once, but but it's really just a joke machine gun. Like yeah. the plot is an engine for jokes, yeah, not yeah. vice versa. Yeah. And uh, and so that was just a way to just have a couple one-off jokes. Right, like this right. didn't. This doesn't have anything to do with anything. It's just a sort of satire of previously on right. things. And um, and also I think you know what I I I, I must have been ex inspired by Arrested Development because they did the next week on Arrested Development right. and it wasn't anything that was going to be uh, next week so so we just did that reverse basically so it's like half a ripoff. 
Well, how, so we're going to, what we, what Billy and I love doing on this show is we love trying to find out the origins of people's stories. Cause maybe there's someone out there watching or listening that, that thinks, Oh, I'm kind of on that path as well. So we'd love to get into that yeah. with you, Rob, but just for a moment there, specifically talking about children's hospital, where did, where did that clown come from? What is that? Oh, the clown, man. Uh, I don't know. I really don't know. I, I thought like. Um, that I, oh, you know what? I know a guy, this, it must have been from my friend Rob, who uh, I was in Boy Scouts with growing up. And he became, he went to clown college. There is a college, yeah. uh, Ringling Brothers Clown College. Wow. And he became the regional Ronald McDonald. So that was like the gig, man. Oh, yeah. He had hit the big time. And, and then he, uh, then he became, then he quit that when he, when he, or lost that or whatever that ended. And he started just being a clown in hospitals, going over to hospitals and making really sick children laugh. Right. Right, yeah. And, and I thought that was beautiful until I decided to make fun of it. And I thought, well, isn't it, wouldn't it be funny if there was a, a clown in a hospital who was probably the least funny yeah. person there, yeah. who is the most serious, scary, uh, kind of like had his head up his ass. Yeah. Uh, a little bit more than everybody else did because that was sort of the point. Yeah. But um, yeah, it, yeah. Well, it, I guess it's scary. People say I think people kind of get off on saying they're afraid of clowns. I know yeah. there are some people that are legitimately afraid yeah. of clowns. Yeah, but, but you um, are covered in blood a lot. The, cl <laughs> yeah, yeah. the clown specifically <laughs> oh, was, is covered. So in that blood. was part of uh, his clown costume Brilliant. because he's a city clown. You see, we had this whole mythology behind the clowns. Right. There were it was a separate uh, race or even species altogether. I can't even tell you if their internal organs were the same as, <laughs> as, uh, as ours. Because, uh, and every once in a while in the background, every once in a while you would see some of the background extras, they were clowns. Right. And they were sort of the, they were a minority in society, so they were looked down upon, they weren't treated well. There was uh, separate bathrooms at one point on children's when it was convenient for us. Mm -hmm. And, um, and uh, then there was uh, two types of clowns, city clowns and, and uh, circus clowns. You know, city clowns are sort of the snobby ones. And that's what he was right. trying to pass, you know. And so this is a whole, uh, we had a whole story right. in our heads. I don't know if that ever translated. People just go, oh, Patch Adams, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, no, yeah. no, not at all. Never saw it. Mm. Don't care about it. Heard it was terrible. And was, was, was all that stuff already there when you came up with the show or was that something that kind of you know as it went on you're like oh it'd be really the clown funny. yeah like uh, oh. the, the history of the clowns yeah. and no the back yeah the back i because i'm kind of a geek about that stuff right you know i get way too into that kind of thing sometimes to the detriment of the show itself yeah, yeah. and uh um i from the very beginning we had background extras as clowns oh, and right. there would be sometimes a nurse who's a clown and um but just scattered you know um only here and there and uh and i didn't want to hit it too hard like we've mm -hmm. only had mm, out of out of seven seasons of episodes probably two or three clown centric episodes it was i just wanted it just to be an accepted thing nobody really mentions until it's relevant mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, that's when it was, it's most successful, but it was, it was, um, I just have so much fun doing that. Yeah, you know, right, I love sure. mythology. And it also, it had some of the best posters, uh, like billboard well, that, posters for that's a That's the show thing. It's like, people think I was the lead of Children's Hospital. Yeah. I mean, I created the show, but I was, because I'm producing and sometimes directing the show, I'm not. I, I hated acting on it. Yeah. I just didn't like it. It was too much time away from writing or whatever. Mm -hmm. And um, so I'm in, I'm probably, uh, compared to the other main characters, a lesser, a more minor character. Mm -hmm. And But it's just an eye-catching thing on posters. So yeah. of course you're going to have the clown front and center. Yeah. You're going to be stupid not to. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, well, let's go back. Maybe we'll go back to the origins of Children's Hospital, but let's go back to like how stuff all began for you mm. in terms of being in this business. Like oh. when you were a kid, were you always wanting to be an actor? No, I wanted to be a writer. Uh, I I never 
I didn't, I come from the small suburb of Boston and, and I don't know what it was like for you guys, but in a just normal blue collar middle class town, being an actor is just not a thing. Mm -hmm. You know, it was never, we watched them and they must, somebody must be doing it, but it was never, I was told I could be president someday, but not, never an actor. Yeah. Um, and, uh, it was not until my senior year of high school when all the guys in the theater to, theater group, high school theater group, had graduated that I started doing plays. Just because uh, I hated those guys <laughs> at the time. They're nice guys. I actually know some of them now, but like, uh, I don't know. It was it was a girl thing, yeah. and uh, I uh, started doing plays, and I and I was told that I was good, so. Yeah. And when I got into college, I told my a roommate that I that I did that. And one day he came home. I think I was a sophomore in college. He came home and he was like, "Hey, I signed us up for a Torch Song trilogy auditions." And I was like, "Great, what's an audition?" <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. And we got it. And uh, it was then it never ended. Then I was just like, I was on the the road. Right. And it wasn't till the when I graduated, I had a conference with my acting teacher, like the guru. Everybody has their guru, you know. This was mine, Ed Golden at UMass, and he said, uh, "And I'm doing a perfect Ed Golden impersonation right okay. now." Okay. He goes, um, "So, uh, do you think you want to do this for a job?" And I was like, "Yeah, I'm. I think, I think, I think I want to do it." He was like. Yeah, you can. <laughs> like, and, oh, great. So it's like Good. I, I had Check. permission and that was it. And so then once I once I am focused on something, I just put my nose down and that's the main focus. Right. So were you at university near Boston then? Uh it's like two hours outside of Boston. It's right. sort of in the country. And were you studying theater or English or I was studying English and mm. I, I took on theater as a double major. Uh, halfway through college, but only I had no plans on finishing the major. It was only so I could get into the acting classes. Oh, right. Yeah, okay. so it was sort of a scam, um, and I kind of regret that now. And what was the what were the kind of standout productions that you were in that you thought, oh, this is like I'm really enjoying this? Well, Shakespeare. I I was big into. I discovered Shakespeare. I, I was cast in um, Romeo and Juliet. I played Paris in college and community productions around my college. I played Paris three times. Mm. So uh, I had hair. There was a one, one time I, I'd make a perfect Paris. It's a part. It's a tiny, tiny part. Um, and then uh, I did uh, a couple more Shakespeare. I just got, and then I started focusing my English major on drama, on, on, on English drama, like, like, um, modern and classic mm -hmm. Shakespeare, Tom Stoppard, you know, mm -hmm. Pinter. I don't know if Pinter's English, is he? Yes, he yes, yes. He feels English. Yeah, he doesn't yeah. he? All those, sure. all those pauses. <laughs> it's be English. Yeah. Come on, that's English. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, and uh, then so 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 that's sort of uh, what I what I latched on. I did that the first two years I was in New York City trying, you know, like pounding the pavement. I just did crappy way the fuck off Broadway plays that mm -hmm. nobody saw. And um, and at that point, were you writing as, as well at the same time? No, see, at that point I was auditioning. I would start auditioning for everything because I realized the one thing I wasn't good at, I wasn't confident about at least, uh, was my auditioning skills. And because it's not something you can really learn in college, it has to be a practical thing. So I just went out on every audition possible. I got backstage magazine, which was the way to go back then. And and I went. I mean, I would go for like you know, uh, uh, black, uh, handy, uh, capable uh, nursing student. Mm -hmm. I was like that. I'll, I'll audition for that. <laughs> you know, yeah. it, and and uh, and eventually I started to get stuff. Mm -hmm. And then I happened to get a comedy uh, sketch group. I, I auditioned into a, into a sketch group, bad sketch group. They were well-meaning. Uh, they're very nice people. Mm -hmm. And uh, and that that sort of started me off on my next trajectory. 
And as a kid, did you feel like you were funny? Were you were you the funny? <laughs> were you the class clown? Yeah, I I well, I mean, one of many. I think everybody in Boston thinks they're funny. Sure. You know, Not every blue collar thing. Yeah, yeah. Everybody thinks like they just say things in a funny way. Like, ah, you kumquat is funny <laughs> yeah. all of a sudden, just because the way they say it. And, yeah. you know, they think they're funny and it makes it funny yeah. almost. So I didn't really know. I was told that I was funny by certain people. And then I was, um, I was talking about, I think it was like my Boy Scout uh, den, a group of boys that I used to meet with once a week, Boy Scouts, Cub Scouts. And, and they, and I, I was going with my mother, I said, I, so uh, 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 Rob, other Rob is the artsy one, and uh, Josh is the sporty one, and Derek's the one that thinks he's funny, but he's not really that funny. And, uh, and my mother said, well, what are you? And, uh, and I said, well, they say I'm the funny one. They, said, they say I think I'm funny. <laughs> um, and she goes, yeah, you do think you're funny. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. I still don't know if I was funny. I, I've seen whole movies and I was looked like a pretty serious kid. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think there was a little of both. Mm -hmm. And then the, the Daily Show thing, how did that happen? You Was that based on the comedy troupe that you were in? It, sort of. I got, I, I, I wrote this sketch for the comedy troupe where I was doing a bunch of voices and characters in it. And that attracted a, a voiceover casting agent. Uh, so that was my first foray into the business. And she used to bring me in uh, on radio ad auditions. And I, I started getting some. And um, and then, uh, what was the question? How did the, how did it come about with uh, The Daily oh, Show? With The Daily Show, show yeah. So she, so I was then in the UCB. I went to the, I was in the UCB. And, and um, I think they saw me there. They saw Ed Helms and I there. Right. And... Uh, we, um, and then it just so happened that the ca same casting director was casting the daily show. Mm -hmm. So she called me in. I don't know if they had called me or she just said, Hey, why don't you get in on this? And I knew I was a huge fan already, even from like the Craig Kilborn days. Right. And I knew I could do that. Yeah. And so I, I never practiced more for an audition than, than I did for the daily show. I even like took my sides and I pasted them up on the wall mm -hmm. so I was like I was pretending it was a teleprompter in a way and and uh I was you know making big choices and stuff and I got all the way up to John uh there's an audition with John at the desk and it was the first audition I can honestly say I, I had a blast on. Mm -hmm. Like I just had a blast doing it. He was very kind of collaborative to work with. He's yeah man yeah he and he's also like uh, easy with the laughs. Right. He doesn't hold back. He's not Lauren yeah. Michaels. Right. He doesn't laugh right. on purpose. He's right. like, he makes you feel good. Right. He makes you feel wanted. Right. So um, it was just, I felt like from the minute they said, hey, what do I want to come in for this? That it was right for me. Very cool. Um, yeah, so that was uh, that and was. How, how long was that for? I was on that show for four years. Four years. Yeah. But was that New York still? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and when you're watching someone like John Stewart for four years at such a close range, yeah, is because you've been lucky enough to work with like Dwayne Johnson, who again is is another one at the another very, one of our very, very important uh, game. joke writers, uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> comedians. But like, I mean, the, the correlation between those two is like the both they were both for a long time there, just absolutely smashing in their particular yeah. field. Is there any? Is there anything that you that you saw similarities between those two people? Of like, well, this is why they're both hugely successful. My gut reaction is uh, no, not a thing, except for maybe their work ethic. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, they set themselves up to succeed john came into the show and he had already had a he was a wake of failed shows behind him and yeah. this was sort of his last thing and he got in there and he really at, at to with great effort um kind of changed the show into what he thought it could be mm -hmm. and so so he made it into something that he knew he could thrive in and uh and and Dwayne, like, um, you know, he, 
he has he's very loyal he has um of course he has his team of people that are with him he has a hair person she's lovely um, what does she do <laughs> she, she, she swipes t- sweat off his head <laughs> just bu- buffs his forehead yeah maybe she maybe she you know like says ray is shaves a uh, yeah. errant patch here and there yeah. but uh he you know he's got his team is always with him so he i think he has set himself up in a position where he he feels supported yeah. and can just do what he does yeah. you know and they're both i wouldn't say john i wouldn't say john uh, john they they're good with people Dwayne, you get the feeling that he enjoys people right uh john stewart's a comedian right you know he enjoys com- people as much as any comedian does yeah, which yeah. is to say he's he'd rather be alone <laughs> right but yeah. uh comedians are but he's good you know he's 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 uh he's he can connect. He, they know how to connect. Yeah, you know, in a way that's sort of elusive. I that I can't really explain. I guess. Did you ever hang out in Dwayne's gym? The portable. <laughs> yeah, gym? yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, what the um What's iron the, the iron, iron paradise? paradise? Yeah, only on leg day. Right. Yeah, yeah going yeah. out on leg day. Yeah. Yeah, because I like to work hard. Sure. No, you can see I, that. When I got cast to that show, I had a. I was afraid. I was like, Sandy, what if? What if he wants to work yeah, out with me? What if he's like once a week? And she just <laughs> laughed at me like, he's not going to want to work out with you, dude. He's gonna, he might lift you. <laughs> <laughs> he might bench he you. Might, yeah, he might work out with you. <laughs> yeah. But uh, no, nah, he's no interest in that. That's his time. That's, I mean, watching him on but, Instagram do his workouts is just it's extraordinary. It's insane. He sells it too, man. He, yeah. Boy, he really sells it. He really wants to, I feel like getting into the gym when I'm watching him. Yeah, you know, yeah, and I don't. Yeah, no, he goes, he goes all out for he's, everything. Like you know, try a little harder with the, the the energy drink that he promotes, the Toa thing. So it's called Toa, and then he has his oh yeah, he has his Teramina tequila. tequila. Everything that he associates himself with, he is a hundred and ten percent involved. Like yeah. he's all over it. You know? Absolutely, I got crazy respect for that guy. I've been trying to get Billy for years now. To, to shave his head. To shave his head. I'll, to, I'll do it. To watch, to watch my all-time favorite TV show, which is the Larry Sanders show. And I think John Stewart in that is yeah. amazing. He's great in that. He's yeah. amazing. Yeah, he's great. Because he's playing that very delicate role of, clearly they're trying to usher him in to replace Larry, but he also kind of likes Larry. So yeah. he's kind of like, hey, bud. And Larry's yeah. obviously super threat, bud. Yeah. Do you ever spend any time with Gary Shanley? Never. No. Never never no. had a chance to meet him. Amazing. Yeah. I th- Have you? Never, because I hear, yeah, he's just he was a like a really special dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that uh, Apatow documentary about him is. is oh, I haven't seen that. Oh, it's great. The Zen, the Zen Diaries of Gary Shanley. Yeah, which is like he was a big Buddhist yeah. and and really together. Yeah, yeah. I got to see that. I'm interested in the with all these uh, shows, the kind of American shows like that. Is is it always a writing room? Is there always? Yeah. Always going and always well, yeah, writing. Always, yeah, always like you know, like you were um like the British like the office of that would be two guys writing it and they've written it and that's it. They go in yeah. and make it. And then this American thing, which which I think is is great for that fast comedy, like you were yeah, saying, like machine gun gags. Yeah. Like you it'd be almost impo- I, I I would be stressed out my mind. Yeah. To have to go in and do a show like that if it's I'm tough. writing it. It's tough. With the, does the room make it easier? Well, on Children's Hospital, we started using a write. We used to just farm out episodes for people to write, and I would write a lot, and the other right. producers would write a lot. And uh, we, 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 we got a writer's room, I think, after season five. And Season five? Yeah, wow. it was just wow. like the last two seasons, two oh, or three wow. seasons, we had a writer's room. And it was great. You see why it works, um, and you don't have to. You can count on things being worked on that you don't have to be there working on them while yeah. you're shooting the show. But, uh, but yeah, it is a constant machine. Mm-hmm. You know, when you have a writer's room, you're committing sort of to that, that sort of. Um, and I think it's also like it keeps you busy. At least for me, as a producer and writer and actor, it keeps me busy. It just makes me, you know, that saying like, if you want something done, always just ask a busy person. Yeah. Like I feel like I can do anything 
when I'm going, going, going like that. Mm. And you is know? that what the writing room is like? Yeah, that's what it feels like for me. And did the did the Daily Show have that as well? Yeah, they had, oh my God. So the Daily Show writer's room was about 15 of the smartest, smartest funniest. people you've ever, yeah, man. That's they're, it's they're so working, intimidating. They're going kind of minute to minute sometimes, All right? the time. Because the news is changing. Always going. And then at one point when I was there, they were writing the book at the same time. So they were like, burning the candle on both ends and they were uh super smart super funny intimidatingly funny yeah that's when i actually realized like because i was always worried um that i'm of average intelligence i was always worried that people would think i'm dumb right so i think i sometimes tried too hard to to appear smart right. and that's where i learned to f relax <laughs> you know because yeah. It's actually there's some strength and some power in 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 surrounding yourself with people who are smarter than you mm -hmm. and being okay with that, not being the smartest guy in the room. And just now I just assume I'm not the smartest guy in the room. Mm -hmm. So it's a uh, I can it, it it frees you up to ask questions, you mm -hmm. know? It 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 changed me in a lot of different ways. So, so with a to with a topical show like The Daily Show, obviously they have to stay current to what's going on. Mm -hmm. At what point in the day would you have to cut it off and oh say God. we can't I'm t right, talk about that? Right before taping, and it's yeah. like, it's like, uh, and I'm talking like t taping would sometimes be delayed because the whole show gets written, and I don't know their entire process. I know they get together. And they're pitching stories, and they they're like, "This, I got one story. All right, we're gonna do that for the day. Um, these two guys on this, these two guys on this, these two guys on this, and they'll just be working all day on it, writing, rewriting. They get together with John again in the middle of the day. He'll go over it, give notes. They'll get back, rewrite it, uh, and rewrite it again. And then at rehearsal, we do it, and we'll add things maybe, and. <clears throat> then between rehearsal and the show, he'll call uh, the writers of the piece into the room. And if there's a correspondent involved, the correspondent as well. Mm -hmm. And nine times out of 10, that piece that they're giving notes on will get completely rewritten before air, wow. um, before tape rather. And uh, it, yeah, it's, it's fascinating to watch. Yeah. I liked being just a one of the cogs in the machine there and not the main guy that would that would that mm. job would i mean it it's why he he retired it's like yeah. it killed him yeah, yeah. <laughs> he got did, gray so did early you, did you see that could you see the pressure oh well not did he handle it well yeah i don't know about the pre you know i don't know if it was pressure i think it was like his just life was all this right. he he had kids and a wife and he, um, I was on the show as a guest on the couch uh, a couple months. It was right after he announced his retirement. So he still had a couple months to go, yeah. right? And he came into the, the makeup room when I was getting my makeup on and sat down. And he goes, Rob, you, uh, you, you're married. You have, uh, you have kids, right? I'm like, yeah. He goes, yeah, and you take them. You get up. Uh, and you take them to school, you walk them to school. And I'm like, yeah, walk them to school. And you and you get them at the end of the day. Uh-huh. And then you you can go home, you go home and you have like, you have dinner with them. And basically you see the sun at the beginning of the day and you see the sun at the end of the day. I was like, yeah, yeah. I see it all, all through the day, yeah. <laughs> and he's like, yeah. Mm. What is that like? <laughs> <laughs> mm. So he was so ready. Right. He was so ready. Living for the job. Man, I can't imagine doing that job. Yeah, that's hectic. And it's like we don't seem to like know a lot about John Stewart, right? Like Leno was kind of the car guy yeah. and Letterman was like the cigar guy. What did we know? Yeah. What was John Stewart's thing? I don't know. Just I don't know if he's got a thing. Outside of work. I think just was... what we I don't know if there is I don't know. Really? I'm sure there is. Oh wait, I know he drums. Oh, he's a drummer. He's, he's, a, drummer. he's a drummer. He's a drum guy. He and I think that was that may have started after he retired from the Daily Show. Like he took up drums. Wow. And uh, from what my the few conversations I've had with him afterwards, it seems to me like he's pouring a, as much energy into the drums as he did into the Daily yeah. Show. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like he's just that kind of guy. Wow. He's just that. 
when he was a stand up, he just did stand up and did it, you know. And uh, and he's done some directing, right? He's done so. He likes directing. Yeah, he writes movies and directs them. Mm -hmm. And um, he's a uh, he. I don't, but I don't know what his other things are. Yeah. I don't know if he's. I mean, besides drumming, I don't know if he has hobbies. I know he's got his farm. Oh, he has a farm. Yeah, he's got a farm. He he rescues farm animals. Mm -hmm. So he has cows on that farm. He told me he said, you know, cows. Can gr I go? Yeah, I don't. Yeah, yeah I, I know, know cows. cows. Yeah. yeah, I know them. Beg not personally. I'm not going to talk about them behind their back, <laughs> but I know them. Uh, he said, uh, "Cows, if you let them age, which we don't, you know, mm -hmm. uh, they can be the size of like baby elephants. Damn. You know, they're huge." Mm -hmm. Uh, so so he's he's really into that whole thing. Huge cows, uh, yeah. big he's into big cows. Into big cows. That's his <laughs> Who hobby. Isn't? Yeah, I mean it's pretty interesting. <laughs> Let's see how big these <laughs> yeah, get. exactly. Oh well, that's a good thing to do with your money. You have a whole bunch of land. Yeah, and you're, you're helping out like older helping farm out. animals that you know. Yeah, need farm to animals that are just uh, gonna be slaughtered, I oh. guess. And I don't know how he gets them, but. And he also has his his big cause is the vets and right. vets and yeah. nine eleven survivors, yeah. uh, people that were working at the site. Fire, that was great. Lots of fire stuff, right? That, that, that really that, turned that the show was... around. I mean, not even around it. The show was great before, yeah. but yeah, that really, yeah. The, George Bush was very good to us mm -hmm. as a president. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> very yeah, good yeah. For comedy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Some yep. of those presidents are. Aren't yeah, they? yeah, yeah. They make it easy sometimes. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, he's been very supportive of 9 11 was fantastic right? for us. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> so, how, how do you go from that to writing your own show? And, uh, like, how. Yeah, how long was Children's Hospital floating around your head? I think it was probably a year. I came here because I, I moved to LA when I got, I got a sitcom, like a multi camera sitcom. It was uh, Seth MacFarlane's first live action show called The Winner which in retrospect was a stupid thing to name a show mm -hmm. um, because the critics are already like... Yeah, we're loser. ready for that. Yeah, even if it sucks a little bit, I'm going to call it a loser. Yeah. Uh, and um, it that only made it six episodes. It was about a shut-in myself, played by myself, whose best friend is a 14-year-old boy. <laughs> and <laughs> I think Fox realized at about four or five episodes in that, that uh, they were writing... Potentially writing a show about a pedophile. <laughs> oh dear! <laughs> so, so that was gone. And then the writer strike happened, and I was poor as hell. Like I didn't have. I was. I. I had a new baby. I mm -hmm. lived in a new city. I had no job, no prospects of even getting a job in the near future, because it was a protracted the strike. And uh, so, what I did was I just spent my time learning how to be productive. Yeah. For when the time came, like, how do you organize your thoughts and how do you get things done? And I, and I found, uh, different ways that people, different like methods of getting things done. And I got my brain in order and I felt like once my brain was in order, um, then my mind was sort of free to have ideas. Ideas would just start popping up. Mm. And web series, web series were a big thing back then. So mm. uh, at, at first, the, the first season of Children's Hospital was a web series. Mm. My um, daughter, uh, when, when they were young, uh, they, they had this thing called Handmaid's Elbow, I believe. And it's um, your, a ligament comes out of place. Oh, right. And it hurts them really bad and they get frozen, like, like, their arm gets frozen. Yep. It's terrifying. So we brought them to the hospital and and it was fine, of course, but I was sitting there in Children's Hospital in LA and it was nuts there, man. Scared parents. And there was literally a life flight pilot with a with a whole team pushing a stretcher in, like yelling stat, like mm -hmm. on TV. It reminded Shit. me of TV. Yeah. So I think that's what got my brain going. And and uh, I remember like this, the, the stretcher, the gurney was smaller than mm. regular gurneys mm. and the IV bag was smaller and everything was smaller. And that really destroyed me. Mm. And I, I said to myself while I was in there, like, this is the least funny place I've ever been in my life. Mm. And then as we were pulling up to m my house, 
home from the hospital, I said to Sandy, like, do you think this is a good idea? Like I just, <laughs> on the way home, I had come up with this idea for Children's Hospital. Like it, the most, inner, you know, sex, all the sexual politics of a, of a hospital drama, but in a children's hospital mm -hmm. where it's the most inappropriate place for it. Yeah. It really yeah. walked that razor's edge of what <laughs> yeah. you can and can't do on oh, TV. Oh, well, yeah. Now, now, well, I mean, watch it again. I, I'm a, I, I cringe at some of the stuff we were doing. We were like right on the edge there where yeah. <laughs> we just made it. Yeah, I watched the pilot episode last night, uh, the night before last, and at the end of that, there's a little talking heads with you where yes. you talk about your babysitter. And I was like, yeah. there's no way you Oh, I, that. I'd do that. Oh, really? I think I'd do that joke. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's one of my favorite jokes ever. That's brilliant. <laughs> it's not even in Children's Hospital, and it's one of my favorite bits we've yeah. ever done. Yeah, your performance of that is amazing. But I was watching it, and I was like, oh, my God. I just love, like, in real time, watching somebody realize something, uh, like, massive about themselves. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's huge. But well, how, what, what did you mean... Um, like you you learned how to put your head in the right space like oh, what yeah. were you doing were you reading books on yeah it yeah websites web like everybody's got their every there's a whole little weird corner of the internet devoted to um being productive mm -hmm. and i stumbled upon this system called the uh, get things done gtd right and uh and and this one dude merlin man who had sort of modernized it for the sort of digital age and and how to use your phone and always have an inbox basically so if you're walking down the street and you have an idea or you've realized you have to do something and you th say I'll remember it you're not you might remember it mm. but for sure it's going to be it's going to be adding a level of stress that you're probably not even aware of mm -hmm. right yeah so if you just get it out of your head and get it down and then there's a waste, a boring way to organize it and everything um, when you get everything onto one into one place. But uh, and it's also uh, inbox zero is a big thing. I have like right now I have probably five unread, however many unread emails and that that I I've how many ever emails I've gotten since I've been here. Mm. As a number of emails in my inbox, you know, you, n you never have like three hundred emails. No, 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 no. Right? No. I always claim it. Billy's got one hundred and thirty-five unread emails. Delete them. Can't delete them. Yeah, you can. Might be something interesting. I did. A, I deleted so much. I well, if there's a thing about big I, cows in there, yeah, I probably Ooh, deleted man. something about big cows. It's I. I'm sure there's a a treasure of of nonsense I'd be interested in. Right? <laughs> Gone. So was, that's interesting though. So yeah, start you were yeah. working and you just thought I'm going to I'm do I'm going to work on working. And you that's didn't great. think first thing is I'm going to write something. You just thought I'm going to work out how you work Get in the right headspace. I wasn't even saying that wasn't even the goal of like maybe that will help me. I found this system and and I was and it and I realized oh this will actually free up my brain for ideas for wow. whatever, you know, mm -hmm. whether it's writing or anything. And, um, and it did, it, it really worked. I That's love that. Interesting, I do. So there's, I do a version of that, which I didn't even realize is kind of similar to what you did, but I always say to my friends and I do it all the time. If they're having a busy time in their life or something's going on, I always say, make a list. Have you written make down a list, list, man, get it out of your brain and yeah. onto a piece of paper because then you won't need to, like you said, worry about the fact that you've lost it in your yeah. brain. It's definitely on that piece of paper. And it's the added benefit of already having felt like you've done something by writing it down. Right. So it actually gives you a boost mm. to to make a list. Yeah. And, you know, everybody likes to make a list, but there are list people, and I was one of them. So this, mm. like, really spoke to me, mm. this whole thing. And then the other one, which I'm sure you've done, Rob, if you don't have any unread emails, because I don't either, is... If you go into your little search box at the top of your emails and write unsubscribe, it will bring up everything that you can unsubscribe from, which <laughs> yeah, is really That's good. No, I didn't know that's that a trick. Great one. So put in unsubscribe and then any opportunity yeah. for you to unsubscribe, it'll show up in your inbox. That's you smart because like I, uh, I do, that's one thing I do get on, I'll go on a, on a unsubscribe spree. Mm -hmm for a couple yeah, days yeah. and then I'm cool for yeah. a while yeah. but then it always builds up again it does yeah yeah maybe I'll do another one yeah it's a good one I'll do one later Billy and Dom eat the world 
Well, should we eat the world, William? Yeah. Shall, shall we? Um, it's, this is our favourite part of the show. <laughs> from. Regular but feature of the show where event, we eat. This is snacks. adventure. Should we talk about what you wanted us to eat, which I think is quite interesting. Oh, yeah, that's a good thing. So I had, what was the first thing I said? Well, Chicken's feet. Wasn't there something before that too? Oh, was there even that worse you were like, that? shut up? They, oh, we're not doing that. Wait, but didn't one of it? your kids Chicken say feet. silkworms? Yeah, yeah. So Marlo, we, my my youngest, my we nicked that. daughter is like loves. She's like cool because she eats bugs. Oh, she'll eat like you know bugs and chocolate or lo- oh, right. lollipops. Yeah, yeah, those yeah, things yeah. you get in a gift store. Yep, and. uh I, I don't know. I'm not into that. But then <laughs> so. you 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 settled on, or we settled on tripe. Yeah, because chicken feet is something I've always been curious about, but never thought to order it in a like a when I go to a yeah. Mexican restaurant or right. something. Because uh, if I hate it, and there's a chance how I'm much, gonna hate it, how much meat is on that? <laughs> you know, well right? Well. I'm gonna, you know, so it's gonna be a whole waste of a yeah. of a dish there. Yeah. And so I never, I've never tried it. But so then we landed on tripe. Have you had tripe? Yeah. What did you think? So I had tripe when I was a kid. Do you have you had tripe? I had it as a kid as well. Yeah. Do, do they have it in Boston? How did they cook it? No, my dad. They didn't really have it in Boston. Right. My dad. Um, I was like a very adventurous eater when mm. I was young. I used to like weird things. I used to try everything, right. and and my dad got such a kick out of it, and so it was like a point of pride for me. And so he found this restaurant in New Hampshire that their specialty was tripe. It was like um, in, a, in a tomato sauce or something. And I was like, great, let's go. And I went there and I took one bite of it. it, it and it's, it's the lining of cow's stomachs yes, or intestines. Yeah. And it's exactly what it tastes like. It's disgusting. Uh, it tastes like what it sounds, tripe. Right, right, and we 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 ate it horrible. like growing it's up big in Scotland. Scotland really, it? yeah, oh, it sounds like a Scot Scotland thing, right? Yeah, and uh, the the cook it in milk and butter <laughs> and <laughs> with, with, with potatoes this? and onions. Come, come on, oh, and it's actually the flavor of the actual thing is is lovely until you have to bite into yeah, the yeah, tripe. You have to touch it with your mouth. The tripe is yeah. the that's a it's like yeah. rubber. It's a weird. Um, well, we didn't find it, so I don't even we, know why we're no. talking about it. Uh, <laughs> because our incredible Johnny producer Clues, Johnny went uh, to a few went different places. Went all over. He went to Sorry, butchers, Johnny. been Couldn't everywhere. Weird restaurants. Couldn't get it anywhere. Yeah. Well, so, good. But you found a, a packet of chips that were half open. Yeah. So you guys have a bucket. <laughs> You guys have a bucket of garbage over there. Yeah. Half of the stuff is edible, first yeah. of all. There's like a light bulb in there. <laughs> yeah. And I found, and it was all stuff that I've had before. And one thing that was weird, like there were like blue potato chips uh, or blue flavored potato. Yeah, yeah. They were flavored blue. Yeah. And then I found these. These are ruffled, uh, all dressed potato chips. So what does all dressed mean? Or every flavor you can think I of? I think I'm fairly sure that it's kind of brilliant in a way. They just take the leftover dust from all their other chips and they put it on this chip. Mm-hmm. And you can only really get them in Canada. They're a big Canadian thing. Right. Um, and I remember for some reason seeing them a lot in New Orleans. Uh, and, uh, and you guys happen to have some. Now, of course, this bag... It's half open. It's it's, <laughs> it's we pulled the bag opened. out. We settled on the bag, and then we noticed that the it's yeah white. It's been one the the bottom of the bag has been taped up. <laughs> yeah, and strange. it almost looks like surgical tape or something. It's a white <laughs> it's like tape. white it's gaffer's tape. Mm. Um, think, we open it up and uh, let's have a look inside. And I was yeah, I yeah. think it's a worry. I'm kind of touched honest, that you're worried. Uh, well, to be honest. Uh, and it's, it's sounding worse than the tripe. It's all flavors, dust that's left. Oh, And no. someone's already opened it. Rob's a fan. Oh, it's beautiful. No, they're, really? they're the best. They're the best. Really? Oh, are they fresh? Oh God, we don't have a plate or anything. Crunchy? Mm, they're right. great. Okay. Are you sure? Yeah, 100%. Okay, should we get little plates so we can have a few Here each? Here comes John. And uh, did you get these in Canada for the first time? I mean... Yeah. Were you making working in Canada? What were you making when you first had a ruffle all flavor? All dressed. What was I shooting? Yeah, what were you doing? 
were you traveling back in time in a, in a hot I tub? I think I was, man. Yeah, because that it? shot in Vancouver, so I yeah. think it might have been hot tub. Yeah. That was a fun movie. Oh, man. thanks, man. That was so funny. John, we're going to need to rely movie? on you for some info because we don't have yeah, any about ruffles. Too. I'm sure you can Is that too much? Because it is kind of just everything. Is it... No, to you're me. gonna. I don't know what the hesitation is. It's, it's Billy's. Do you like flavored chips? But I don't like the idea that it's like an afterthought, and I don't like the idea someone's opened it. You want there to be more focus, yeah, and and, and fresher. I want it fresher. <laughs> you want, you I want don't want be, somebody else's fingers being on them be, before <laughs> me. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, there's been fingers on there's it. There's definitely been fingers. Well, it adds to it. Well, Hold let's on. Give, let's give it a little taste. It adds to the dust. Oh, now that's a tangy chip. Mm. Quite good, actually, Bills. Got yeah. a lot of barbecue in there. Mm, a lot of barbecue. I think, you know, every chip uh, is a little different, too. Sometimes you can taste the sour cream. Oh, yeah. Maybe the, maybe the um, cheddar and onion. Mm -hmm. uh, the tomato. Oh, there's the tomato as well. Well, there's ketchup, potato there's a chips. Ketchup again. It's complicated. There's a lot of ketchup. I taste the ketchup a lot. Does it, is it only ruffles that are allowed to do an old dress? No, I, kind of I don't think so, no. I think it's just a, t a type of chip, like sour cream and onion. I don't think they're as fresh as they should be. No, it maybe not. Crunchier. Would this be one of the chip flavors that do you have? Do you keep chips in your house, or you no chip fan? Not usually. I mean, I don't. I, I don't. Sandy does the shopping, so we have. Uh, Yes, I tend have. to subscribe to the idea that if you bring it into your house, 100% you're going to eat it. So <laughs> yes, best yeah. to have none of the bullshit. Yeah, we have like uh, um, um, some, um, what are they, uh, tortilla chips mm -hmm. often, you know, just that those are it's about as plain tortilla chips. Well, they're nice. I like these chips. John, good, right? Info? Yeah, I got some. Go. I have some. What do you hear this? Let's, 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 <laughs> this go is, on, John. Um, this is quite interesting. Oh, okay, John. Um, it's the flavor of mixture of uh, ketchup, barbecue sauce, barbecue sauce, salt, and vinegar. Um, it was uh, originated in Canada. This is yeah. where it came from. Uh, now, funny enough, Syracuse, New York, potato chip maker Terrell's began selling all, dr all dressed chips on their name Syracuse style, which is interesting because my oh. wife is from upstate New York, and they have uh, uh, everything buffalo wings. Which what? is all the Everything sauces. Ugh. It's the best. Oh, I know it sounds sauce. weird, but they mix all the sauces and they can just glob it all over I these. And it's that. my favorite. favorite. Life's too short. But that's yeah. about as interesting as it gets. I'm sorry. I'm still. Well, that's all right. Well, it's, that's a tasty all right it's a tasty chip. It's a tasty chip. So, okay. So, you no, totally called it with the tomato ketchup. No cheddar and onion, no sour cream and onion in there. No, I think but you the were salt right. Salt and vinegar. Barbecue. And the barbecue tomato for sure. Ketchup. You've obviously got a very complicated palate from me. I'm actually really stuffed up right now. So. I, I just tasted a hint. Uh, I only uh, felt the half the power mm -hmm. of those chips, but that's a good chip. They're man. actually quite interesting. Ruffles does a great job. Mm. I mean, I tell you what, <laughs> we we always mark them. We give them scores. We oh yeah yeah mm -hmm. three categories. Not only Rob, there's three categories. three categories. Oh, flavor of course for number one. Okay, then aesthetics. How does it look? Mm -hmm. yeah. Three how. How useful is it? Okay. Good. Uh, how useful is a food? How useful yeah, is, sure. is that? Like, what would you do? Like, if someone came to your house. Oh, God, Billy. And <laughs> you, you went into your, your cupboard, and yep. you, they said, I'm hungry. And all you had was oh, a bag of these. I see. No. A bag of okay. flour. Eggs. Some eggs. It says the same thing every week. <laughs> <laughs> Bottle of ketchup. Bottle of ketchup, yep. chocolate chips. What else? I mean, what would you do? What? A, uh, yeah. I mean, you know what I mean? You'd open them, but I think it might be weird. Yeah, it'd be a tough I, one. I think it's kind of low on everything but the taste scale, right? Well, well, let's, let's go see. taste first, then out of 10, and you can have decimal points. Yeah. All right, well, what's a 10? I mean, I'm so I mean, bad for me, at... a 10 I'm, was like... the ten. The, I've only done two 10s in two this tens. entire okay. podcast. And I've never done a 10. A pint of Guinness got a 10 for me, okay. just the flavor. And yeah. have you had Marmite? Yeah. yeah, I'm, I'm obsessed yeah. with Marmite. Mar so. If you like Marmite, then yeah, sure. That's a ten on that. It's, it's an I'm ten. not a. I it was that's yeah, kind of interesting. It's I, an acquired I, taste. It sure is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Um, but um, Billy's not giving one I, anything a ten. Can you? I've never give it. Go first. Yeah, yeah we'll go hold first. on. I can't think because yeah, that's an interesting flavor. That and see when you started listing them, I found it even more interesting. I think you've been tickled it, by it. It was in my mouth, mm -hmm, it was. and you were saying tomato 
and I could taste it. <laughs> Barbecue, I could taste yeah. it. Salt and vinegar, I could taste it. Mm. So it's an interesting thing. It's so complex. I'm going to give it. A, I'm going to give it a for flavor. I'm giving a nine. Yeah, well, nine. Yeah. Right. yeah. When yeah. when this initially started, you you were quite dismissive and snobby about the it was mainly dress. because of the surgical tape around oh, the bottom okay. I'm a bit worried about that <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm That's still good. worried about I that I love your capacity to change yeah, yeah I love that for I, know. <laughs> um, I liked it too I'll uh, I'll give it an 8 because it didn't right. blow me away but it was good I'd yeah. like it with maybe some ranch yeah, I, I think you I, might put more flavor on it. Just to chill out the flavor, you know, like dumb yeah. it down. A I would, I would probably give it an eight as well. Maybe an eight. Uh, I'll give it an eight point one, right, just a so little bit up, higher yeah, than yeah, an eight, yeah, yeah. because uh, yeah, it's fantastic, but it's still at the end of the day uh, a chip. Yeah, it's, a, <laughs> it's still a chip. It's, it's just it's, still a chip. And when he started listing off what wasn't in the chip yeah. all the powder i thought i was eating mm. i sort of tasted i i i could um i could i could see the seams in it you know oh, i could okay. see the like I well could, you don't like i don't I now like now that we know how the sausage is made no yeah. um it's kind of uh maybe it maybe it's lost a little bit of its luster mm-hmm. i maybe. definitely don't want to know how they were made no no. Definitely not. <laughs> all that all that powder all through. Somebody in there. sweeping it up off yeah. the Yeah, we'll just throw that I'm in. I'm sure with those everything's above board. Yeah. And then the sure like with the, the machine that seals the bag is broken. Just get so some just surgical get some tape. tape. It'll be fine. Tape. It'll be all right. I won't notice the difference. <laughs> well, category two. Aesthetic. Aesthetic. How does it look? look? Well, it looks like a chip, doesn't it? Yeah, but, for a but chip. But, yeah, but Billy, it's ruffled. It's Keep ruffled, that in mind. It's but ruffled. also I don't like I don't like the shade. I don't like the color that. Yeah, no. me either. It, like an like piss orange. I yeah, would call it's, that. It's, orange, it's yeah. not consistent either. It's pretty blotchy. Mm-hmm. No, it's very. It's not. No, I can't. It's yeah. a. It's a three point five. It'd be Ooh. under. Five. I like the ruffle. I like the ruffle. Um, I'll give it a four. Yeah, uh, that's what not, I was going to say. Great. I was going to say four as well. Okay, four. And then Billy's useful. favorite category. That's my favorite. What's that? Oh yeah. How useful. useful. If I had, like, say I was making a soup, would I sprinkle <laughs> this on it? Oh, like a little but crouton? Say I was making, say, a pie, a, right. a shepherd's pie. You could put it in a sandwich. Yeah, I was going to say, it's nice in a sandwich. Ham and cheese sandwich. Yeah. Lovely. With mayo. Nice in a with sandwich. With all those flavors. All right. Yeah. So that, that. Nice in a sandwich. What about, could you, could you smash it up into a dust and then maybe coat some chicken right. and fry that? And now you've got, like, or an old dress Or smash it up into a dust and then sprinkle that dust on a different chip. And then you've got Put on nice. sour cream and onion chips. Yeah. Like, wow. With some ranch, ranch dressing. Yeah. Yeah. There's some, there's some, there's like there's a, some stuff. I mean, it's, it's useful. Is it though? Is it? I don't, I don't know how. I mean, if we, if you think about it that way, there's not a uh, a lot you could do with them. Really. Yeah. Have we, have Even we what them? we mentioned is not it's a not whole great. Uh, shitload of things. I think <laughs> a sandwich is a good shout. You definitely that, put yeah, it in for a sandwich. Sure. I would use them as, um, I think they'd be great to dip into uh, t- tuna salad. Lovely. You oh, know? Right, yeah. Yeah. Lovely. Just trying to think of a different way. That's a, that's about it. Yeah, it's not the most useful no. of Christmas. Like all the flavor put, it's got there, cheese, onion, yeah. barbecue, and then you're put you're putting fish on there as well. Oh yeah. I like yeah, I like right the way there. you're thinking. <laughs> it's extreme. Why well, well you know, the um my dad used to eat uh chocolate ice cream with potato chips, plain potato chips, because it's a salty sweet thing. Yeah. I never got into it. But yeah. these you couldn't do that with. No, it's too exten- too intense. Uh, it's no. too much already there. <laughs> All well, right, well, you still it's a two for me. A two. Mm. I'll give it a. I'll. I'm a four point eight. Four eight. Yeah, four point eight. Yeah. Well, I'm definitely lower than a five, and I I think lower than a four. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a three five. Mm. Quite well, damning again. Yeah, yeah. Wait, three point five seven five. Oh wow. Three point five seven five. Yeah. That's, that's, that's it's not quite. Uh, that sounds about right. Five I think. eight. It's not quite a three five eight. <laughs> it's yeah. It's almost. So, well, if, if, you you round, it up, if you round it up to two yeah. decimal, up, three decimal if points, up, if you round up. But um, I like to do everything with three decimal points. Me too. Yeah. Yeah. I don't even understand decimal points. You well, can only you have one decimal to. point in a in a in a number, right? I get no, it. No, I you get, have a lot. Can you? Can, can have you? More? No, just one decimal. Don't, but 
Yeah, yeah, so you can go all the way back. Yeah, yeah. But you, if you you can't put two of those dots. In oh, the no, thing. no, 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 no. It's not it's, a real then number. You're, then it's chaos. Right, yeah, right. I don't understand. Don't that. take us down there. No, 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 no. Don't do that. Well, here comes Johnny. So I found possibly the person that sent these, and she has a question, which is basically these are called all dressed. But it's only salt and vinegar, ketchup, and barbecue. She's wondering what your all dressed flavors would be. That's oh, a great nice. question. That's and uh, we're taking that to three decimal points, are we? So Ooh, three, three decimal points. That's a, that's three, 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 three flavors yeah. you're allowed in all dressed. All right. Salt and vinegar. Lovely. Jalapeno. Oh. Because I love a spicy chip. Mm. And so, so you've got salt, you've got spice. Yeah. I would go something like a lime chili. So now you've got a Oof. little bit of citrus. It's intense. Wow, I like that's my an intense, intense chip. Yeah. That's quite good. Mine. Yeah. That's a crazy chip. Yeah. Um, I go ahead. Right, uh, cheese. Yeah, cheese chip. Uh, I'm going to steal his jalapeno because I like a little oh, yeah. bit of spice okay. on there. And then hold on. So you've got spicy cheese, spicy cheese, <laughs> and then I'll probably have. I probably, I'll probably put the barbecue on there. Yeah, I think. yeah. Lovely, lovely. I think barbecue is is the great base. So, yeah. but barbecue I would go. Your, yeah, you're right. I would go that those spicy barbecue chips. You know, not the like. Country backyard barbecue. No. So you've, would, all, you've already spicy started, right? like Kansas City or whatever makes a spicy yeah. one. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, so spicy. That's the base. I hesitate to put salt and vinegar in there because the vinegar yeah. is just really overpowering. You know, it's, it's going to cut through too much. So, it? but I think you might need that. So with Absolutely. the spicy, spicy barbecue, salt and vinegar, and uh, sour cream and onion, just oh. because. F- but that's intense too. That's yeah, very intense flavors. That's really yeah. I think that's I think that's a winner. I love that. Yeah, uh, John, what was the name of our lovely lady that sent in that question? Uh, it came from a few, but that message was from a Debbie P from Atlanta. Thank Debbie. you, Debbie. In Atlanta. And do you think Debbie? Great question, Debbie. Mm-hmm. Did she say, did she open them and then seal them with surgical tape? Yeah, you can send. Bags that are unopened, I assume, right? I don't know your policy here. I think they've been opened here. I think you pretty much have a closed container. No, we uh, would rather yeah, things we weren't closed, open yeah. <laughs> because you know, yeah, I don't want fingers and thumbs in there. No, just your own. Yeah, no, no. You know yeah, I mean? somebody could be. Uh, don't you know, even. Yeah, let's not even go there. <laughs> let's not, come on, we're having Don't fun. even go down there. <laughs> well, Rob, it's been brilliant having you on. We've run out of time. Oh, this is um, great. It's great hanging out. It's lovely to see you after so long. Yeah, for um, sure. If you want to get in touch, you can get in touch with us on our YouTube channel, Friendship Onion, or you can rate, review, and subscribe and leave messages and stuff. You can get yeah. hold of our merchandise at thefriendshiponionpodcast.com. Billy, yeah, and if you, want, if you want us to eat something in Billy and Dom Eat the World, yeah. then send it. But don't open it and then seal it first. <laughs> Just send it unopened. Good or point. just glue it or so make it look like it's not open. <laughs> <laughs> Rob, it's been great seeing you. Come back on again. Yeah. You want to tell Rob? us about is there, are you, is there anything coming no, up? No, no. What, what do you, you got? Writing, I'll do it. What are you Let's writing t- these days? Oh, yeah. Same guys. Well, same guys that are a couple of the guys from Children's Hospital and I are writing um, uh, something just, new. A comedy. Good. We know, you know. It's, who knows? Mean Dom can be funny if you need us to be. Yeah. All right. We'll All do right. a British version. Brilliant. Brilliant. Perfect. <laughs> All right. We'll see you guys next week. See All you right. next week on Bye. The Friendship Onion. Toodles. Me and hold me tight all through the night. You're shining bright. I'm your oyster, baby. You're my pearl.